just oh, we're live. <laughs> um, oh. Hi, for whoever's joining us on their lunch break, sat there with a like sandwich about to talk about vibrators. Um, welcome. Um, we are joined by the amazing Patricia Zervantes. I'm always going to screw that pronunciation out. Um, Co-founder and CEO of Vibio, not Vibio, Vibio, because it's all about the vibe, um, who <laughs> are a, basically an amazing groundbreaking sex tech um, company creating amazing products. Um, but I will let you explain it a lot better um, than me. Just start where did it come about like where where did the idea did it come from because you founded it with one of your closest friends didn't you when you were 23 yeah, um so yeah tell, tell us how it started and why you did it so we're a sex toy company uh basically we we try to make sex toys that are a bit different uh out of the norm and we've been working on this wearable vibrator for the last two years me and my best friend uh we met when we were three years old in preschool and we've been best friends ever since. Uh, so it's pretty much a passion project for us. Um, we we loved sex toys, obviously, uh, but we also love the mission behind it. Um, I think right now we need more sexual empowerment and more sexual freedoms. And you know, we were hearing lots of talks about feminism, but not so much about female pleasure. And for us, that's a great part of our, you know, liberation as women and sort of our empowerment. So, so yeah, we just created a toy that would allow couples and people in general to be more open about their fantasies and about, oops, and you know, about their pleasure. So, so basically, that's why we created a wearable, uh, just because it's a bit different. It allows you to explore um, maybe your fantasies. You can wear it out and about. You can let your partner control it for you. So so it's really fun. And, you know, hopefully we'll stir up some conversations, especially among couples. We sometimes see that uh, people are not as open as they should be. And talking about sex and masturbation is so important for women. So, yeah, hopefully making a mark. And when you say wearable, because a lot of people get, um, you know, get not confused, but it's like a lot of people don't know the difference between a vibrator and a dildo and um and a wearable it's sort of um explain the the wearable part of it like how how did how does yours work yeah people when uh they think of sex toys most people think of the classic dildo yeah and i mean that's all good and stuff but uh, most women actually climax from external stimulation uh they need some clit stimulation and then the vagina is the most sensitive just a few first centimeters so that's why we created um, uh, basically a toy that would fit the vulva. It has two motors. So one is in the clitoris and another one is in the opening of the vagina. So it basically hugs the labia mm -hmm. and it fits right there. Uh, we tested it with lots of women. So we're pretty confident it works for uh, most people. But basically you wear it between your body and your underpants and it stays in place. And then, um, and then there's the, the app. Is it controlled so your partner could be you could be sat in a restaurant and he can be on his phone or he can he can go to the toilet and suddenly you're alive under the table uh, so we did it so uh, the wearer always has control so i i think i'm back yeah you're back <laughs> yeah so so basically we designed it so the wearer at any point can uh choose to stop uh, we think consent is very important, especially with a toy like this. So, so basically, you can allow your partner to control it via the internet. Uh, they need to have the app, but it could be in the same room um, or you know across the world. And especially now, I think that's very needed. Um, so, so yeah, it's very versatile. But you can also use it as a manual toy for sex. So, if you're having intercourse with a partner, you can just hold it in your hand and just do some pinpoint stimulation in the clitoris so it basically works works for couples um in many different ways and what needs are like what coming into an industry and it's you know it's not saturated at all especially when you came in there's more and more coming um in now and i mean it's a massive growing it's something like 75 worth 75 billion in last year in the sexual mm -hmm. wellness um coming into into that world what what was the biggest challenges? Like what, what did you see that you wanted to change that you weren't happy with or sort of, you know, I know from experience, the doors that apparently slammed in your face. Um, 
what yeah what did you find the whole journey coming into this world we started the journey very hopeful um but then pretty soon we realized there were some big barriers uh, that we hadn't anticipated and uh, we didn't come from the sex tech industry so so we knew there were some stigmas and taboos for sure um, but then many things surprised us uh, one of them being the access to financial services um, in the end we're business like any other and we face many limitations. Even opening a bank account, a business bank account at the beginning was a struggle. Uh, it took us more than a month to find a bank that was willing to open an account. And mind you, sex toys are completely legal in most of the world. So it's just, it's just pretty crazy that we had to go through that. Even newcomers like Monso and Revolut uh, wouldn't allow us to have a bank account with them. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it's still very taboo, more than we thought it was. And, you know, payment providers, PayPal, all of these companies also have um, many limitations when it comes with working with us. So, so you know, it's yeah. a barrier um, in terms of marketing, even more so. We were speaking before about, you know, uh, Facebook and Instagram's ever-changing um, rules around what is acceptable and what is not. And, you know, I've seen ads uh, in plastics on Facebook, which for me seems crazy considering they wouldn't like they they wouldn't even allow a sex toy company have a profile and you know promote their their toy or even lubricants and condoms are also like sensitive. So there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah, I was looking at this summer, the um what is it, Ro, the big company, Roman Ro, the erectile dysfunction. Um mm -hmm. God forbid a man can't get hard on. Um, is you know what I mean? It's like a billion dollar um company, no problem with investment. You get ads across New York subway, mm -hmm. ad adverts across Facebook. But my God, the minute you talk about periods and menstruation and and menopause and sex toys and like you know a clitoris, exactly. um, there are people look that up. So there'll be a lot of people watching that don't really know much about that one either. Um. It, it that's it it's shut down and i mean that's why we're doing the live chat on here because you know instagram just sort of kept blocking blocking all our content and yeah it's, it's a challenge <laughs> um but how do you on that front what have you found because you're obviously starting out and when you found these businesses especially you know a female founder in the sex world um um you are the sort of person that literally won't take no for an answer and mm -hmm will basically blow torch any door <laughs> that seems shut um so what 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 drives you what are the bits that just kind of get that fire going um in your belly that you want to go right i need to fix this and this is wrong yeah so that touches a lot on what you mentioned that uh female pleasure and female issues in general not necessarily pleasure but just female sexual health uh, has such big stigma in society and you know uh, we talk about a lot about the the pay gap we talk a lot a lot about uh, other feminist issues but for me sexual health and pleasure is on the top on the very top and i think that's the next barrier that we kind of have to break uh there's still a lot of misconceptions you know women masturbating for some people seem just like you know um something they they've never even considered uh, even I remember when we started um, this company, we were pitching to everybody we knew basically what we're trying to do. And you'd be surprised at how many people just asked us, but why doesn't it have a, the shape of a penis? Obviously, all of them men. Um, mm -hmm. But this was a recurring question. And it, it just made us think um, there's so much education to be done. Uh, the fact that this is a legitimate question that people have, that we link female pleasure with uh, penises okay. and dildo. It, it's just so wrong. And it does a disservice to women that are trying to explore their sexuality that maybe don't understand what they're enable, why they're unable to climax from penetration only. Yeah, and, something like over 70, was it 70, 80% of women don't climax through penetration only. That, and that, yeah. you know, it's the sex that you have at school, isn't it? That sex is a penis and a vagina and the end point is the man coming and that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Even using the right words to refer to our anatomy, many people don't know what a vulva is or what's the difference between a vulva and a vagina. Many women too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how can you learn about your own pleasure if you don't know what you have 
between your legs. Um, that's that's very key for me. Um, that's why we designed the toy for vulvas, and we're very uh, concise about the language we use, um, just because it, it's also about education and educating people about you know it's completely fine to have fantasies or you know to to have this. Um, um, sexual experiences that deviated from the norm, um, we have to remove the taboo and the first step is talking about it. So so that's why we try to do with our brand, just encourage yeah. people to talk about it. Yeah, just keep talking about sex. <laughs> Same way you talk about diet plans and fitness plans and, you know, it's what drives us, isn't it? Yeah. Our sexuality. Exactly. I and mean, we should be looking out. So on that, bringing on that, on the, like, why is, why do you think sex tech is so important when it comes to sexual wellness? Um, and how how can it be incorporated? What what is your advice to people to sort of bring it into your just general sexual wellness in the same way, you know, as I said, diet plans and fitness, you bring things in to on that kind of your health and well being. Um yep. so yeah, what would you say? So uh the first thing uh I would touch on is just that toys are great in general. Uh, they're fun, they have no drawbacks, nothing negative about them. And it, it helps a lot. They help a lot of women and men as well to discover uh, sensations and, you, you know, different uh, experiences that they wouldn't be able to experience without a toy. And it also opens up conversations. Um, let's not forget that around 55% of women um, climax less often during heterosexual relationships than men. Uh, that's a big gap. Uh, it doesn't happen in lesbian relationships. It doesn't happen in uh, gay relationships in men. So this is a, a very specific issue of heterosexual couples. And toys are a great way to bridge that gap. Uh, I mean, it, they not only help you discover yourself, uh, help you masturbate, uh, but also, you know, helps you being with your partner and actually reclaiming that pleasure. Um, you know, you don't have to give up penetration, but you can use a toy while you're uh, having intercourse and, you know, just just to aid that and claim your pleasure. There's nothing wrong with that. And we need to start understanding that, that there's not necessarily something missing or we're not substituting, you know, a man or, you know, anything. It's just an add on, something fun, something good. So, so yeah. And on, on that, there's this, and I, it, it always surprises me how many, when I talk about toys with friends, how many of them say that their other half feels threatened by a vibrator? It's as if it's like, yeah. no, it's the, the penis versus the vibrator. It's sort of, I'm like, no. And some of them just, it's their secret thing that they just won't because their other half has got so angry about them having having a dildo or a vibrator. Um, what's your, what would be your advice on um, bringing toys into your relationship and having that those initial conversations and and basically overcoming that feeling threatened for a toy yeah the first step i'd say is being comfortable having sex conversations with your partner if you're not having sex conversations and conversations about your pleasure and what you like and what you don't like and if you're enjoying or not enjoying certain activities then you know that's the main problem uh, and that's the thing that they should tackle first so once there's that understanding that you can be open about pleasure and sex and have these types of conversations, then there are ways of you know explaining why you think a toy would be beneficial and actually also explaining why it's not something that uh, should be threatening to the other person. If we explain that um, maybe we can't uh, come from penetration only, and this is something, an added extra that would help you actually uh, be more comfortable during sex and enjoy it more. Uh, if you frame it like that and your partner still doesn't want you to use toys with you, then maybe the problem is your partner. Um, yeah. Just because it, it's it's very natural. If you explain it well, uh, I think anybody can understand. And obviously we all have um, hangups with sex and we've been taught some things that definitely harm us. But in the end, you have to be willing to learn. And if you have a partner, they should be respectful and also open to, to you know, things that matter to you. And definitely pleasure should be one of your priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the World, the World Health Organization has said that, you know, sexual pleasure is a basic human right. It so, is. You know, 50% of the world's population is, 
yeah is being denied <laughs> a lot of that because it's just not um it's not what have you come across on the like starting this company did you get like friends and family did you get abuse did you get i mean what was sort of um did anything surprise you in the reaction um i wouldn't say abuse um some people were surprised they were a bit shocked um my parents are are more on the uh, traditional side uh, i don't think they've ever used the sex toy so so that was a bit a bit of a surprise but i mean they came around pretty easy have you uh, given them one now <laughs> yeah yeah for sure i i, I even I, i've even showed it to my grandma she's super traditional uh but but yeah i mean they're, they're proud it, it's a business uh, i mean you know there's there's nothing shameful about it um but yeah i i find it um I find it quite nice that many of the people that surround me and Alma as well have have sort of become more comfortable talking with us about sex. Uh, I think if you give that energy, that it's completely fine, that there's no taboo, that you know you can be open. Uh, people respond well to it, so that's why we encourage everyone to be a bit more open about you know sex and masturbation. And if you have friends, just talk about it. Um, yeah, and someone just um someone's asked about their a companion remote toy for men too like a sleeve that squeezes up and down in waves have you have you come across many like male toys i've can't i know mystery vibe but mystery vibe have got a great one um um but i don't know yeah have you come across any other or got any plans to go down the male the male route yeah um we we were actually gifted um a sleeve so it's basically a vibrator for your penis similar to what karim is mentioning in the comments um, and we think they're super interesting. I mean, toys for men, uh, it, it's one of those taboos as well that we would like to tackle in the future, especially when it comes to prostate play. Uh, there's a lot of stigma uh, with men, um, you know, using sex toys and anal plugs. Uh, but, you know, the, the world of sex toys is so, so big. And there's so much uh, things to explore that men are not necessarily um, hearing. So. So yeah, for sure we want to do a male toy. We don't know yet uh, what it's gonna be, but definitely a sleeve for us, I, I think it's a great idea. And I encourage anyone uh, that's interested in sex toys uh, to, to buy one. Yeah, um, and also we've said about education for men around using, wait, basically being confident using a vibrator on their partner. And um, to me that it, that is not the toy, it is that basic sexual education that, as you said, most you men and lots of women don't know about female pleasure they don't know what all the parts are named they don't know that the clitoris is actually about seven inches long but most of it's inside you know what i mean they don't know that we don't come from parents that it's not it's no one's fault <laughs> we just no one gets taught it yeah. on that front so um what do you think needs to change um on that is there anything that sort of you do and you know are passionate about and think needs needs we we doing yeah, uh, for us, education is really important. It's very tied up to our brand. Uh, we we try to educate on different practices. We try to educate on female pleasure, but also on male pleasure. Uh, but I would really like to see, uh, you know, some public backing on this part of the education curriculum. Uh, obviously, really a lot. Uh, what we can do as, you know, uh, businesses or even individuals that, you know, just are in the world is starting with ourselves and making the change that we want to see ourselves and if we want to be more educated then find that education and talk about it with your friends um and with the people you know and you know that's going to encourage them to also educate themselves and also speak about it more openly uh that's the only way that i see we can actually make a difference um, but obviously some institutional support, some widespread uh, sex ed in the curriculum would be amazing to see. And on the, um, um, on that, you know, there's a big sort of shame, the shame and taboo well, around sort of sex in general. But, you know, you say the word, word masturbation and it's as if it's like, you know, we're all going to hell at pace. <laughs> um, on, yeah. on that, what, um, just around masturbation because it's, not just talking about it but what's your advice on on basically exploring yourself and 
because especially at the moment and you know quarantine, quarantine lockdowns whatever you want to tears you know I, I lose track every week in this country of what we're meant to be in and doing but there's a lot of people at home um and I said back in March could be now's the time to be selfish and to find yourself and explore and because you can't go anywhere um so what on that from what would be your advice on people just sort of starting out and kind of coming in with the shame and the guilt and yeah what would you be advice on where to where to begin uh the fact that they already want to start exploring themselves and they know there's uh, some shame that they, they need to work on is a great first step i would say surround yourself uh either in the media or you know in person with people that actually give you positive messages around sex because we see a lot of negative talk uh, around sex lots of sex negativity uh slut shaming uh, and all of this negative talk that we need to recognize in ourselves and kind of work towards uh, removing that um, but also on a more practical level uh, start touching yourself uh, start experimenting and if this is something that doesn't come naturally uh, maybe save some time for it I mean, right now we see lots of great apps like uh, Furly, like Kama, like Deep Sea that kind of uh, help women um, explore that part of their self, uh, a little bit like mindfulness, but uh, for sexual wellness. So I think that's a great place to start, but ultimately it depends on the person. Um, as long as you, you try, you know, explore your body, try to know it better and, and put some time to it, eventually it will come. Uh, it, it won't happen the first time, but you know, it's a process mm. and you have to start somewhere. And if you want to buy a toy, uh, I mean, now sex toy sales have skyrocketed. Gone through the roof. Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, um, due to lockdown. I mean, uh, it's, you know, it, it's a perfect time to start exploring because uh, we don't have much else to do. So, yeah, exactly. What else are you meant to do except play with? Them? And they also, the mental, you know, the mental benefits. Um, yeah from from masturbating what i mean what do you see what do you know on that front of like you know telling people to go for it because you know yeah so many health benefits uh i mean it makes you feel good it relieves stress and right now stress is a big problem uh, for all of us so so why not give it a try i mean something that i find useful in myself is just scheduling it so I know that uh, it feels better when I do it. And sometimes because of, you know, the stresses of life and, you know, just work and, you know, the situation we're living in, I, I forget. I neglect um, that part of my wellness. So, so you know, I just set a reminder. I, I need to do this often. Uh, it, it really it's helps time me. It's time to play with myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, one a day. I, I think one a day is <laughs> ideal for me. Uh, but, you know, every person is different. Um, I think it's really good. There are no um, uh, health uh, problems if you do it. Like, there's nothing negative about it. So so why not just go for it? Yeah, and what do you think? They, where do you see the future of sex tech? Because it's sort of exploding and I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing so much and um, loads of female founders as well, which is great. Um, because you know who better to make something for a female body <laughs> than a female? Um, where do you where do you see it going on the on the sex tech side of things and the wearables and the dildos? Have you seen anything crazy <laughs> coming out? I, I'm seeing really interesting toys, uh, um, especially when it comes to inclusivity and diversity. I think that's where we're headed now because uh, we have lots of female founders. And that's awesome, but we're missing some uh, representation of other races, uh, representation of other uh, sexual orientations, uh, different bodies. Um, there's this company, Handy, that's doing yeah, sex toys. Yeah, we had a chat with them actually. Yeah, them. She's amazing, amazing company. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's amazing, and I wish that uh, we see more of these brands popping up uh, because you know there's the stigma of sexual wellness for women for sure. Um, but there's also a big stigma when it comes to people with disabilities or people who you know, just don't fit the norm of, you know, what you would think a sexual person is. And sexuality is health, but it's health for everybody, uh, no matter who you are or what your condition is or, you know. So so I would like to see more diversity in the industry. And I, I think we're seeing that um, more original toys that work for different sorts of bodies. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, really excited for it. 
Yeah, and real people. And it's something we've tried to do the last three years is move all every picture you see of anyone across anything to do with KK are real members, real stories. And um, um, I was reading something earlier in Vogue um, magazine just saying, um, I'll put it online so you can see it. Um, it was really interesting just saying our celebrity endorsed sex toys becoming mm -hmm. like a celebrity perfume um, and that kind of that perfect image of what it says. Whereas, I don't know, I was kind of reading it with kind of mixed feelings sort of going well when it comes to sexuality there's so much there's a massive spectrum you know yeah. when it comes to it and diversity and everyone's different and um and actually I just I don't know part of me just thinks real people will but do you know what if these celebrities are shouting about talking about sex from the rooftops and don't have a problem with that then the more the merrier <laughs> as far as I'm concerned I actually agree with you. I had the same feelings when I read the, the news. So on the one side, I was really happy to see this in the mainstream media. And I think it's going to be great for the whole movement and the whole industry to have this kind of uh, visibility and acceptance. But at the same time, um, I think we, we still need to hear those voices, expert voices on female pleasure and, and you know, um, kind of the movement kind of democratized that movement and make it, um, you know, for the average person, I'd say, and focus more on the education side of it. So, so I mean, it's great, but also, uh, you know, there's something missing there that I hope in the future we see more of. Yeah, it, as you said, it's that expert bit, it's that education bit. So, you know, as long as they're educated <laughs> and given the tools and told what to go and shout. Yeah. Um, so um, finally, before I let you go, because we could talk to those for hours and hours, um, what would you, just looking back on like you growing up and like you as a girl and a young girl, you're still a young girl, but like a really young girl, um, what do you look back and what advice would you give like your 15 year old self um, and what you look back and go, I wish I'd, that needed to be different and that needed to be different and um, yeah, what would you say? Yeah, at 15, uh, I, I still had a lot of shame uh, regarding masturbation, self-pleasure, and, you know, being with a partner. So so I would just um, try to sprinkle a little bit of sex positivity in my younger self, because uh, I remember masturbating or, you know, kind of masturbating when I was really young, around five, six years old. But probably if you had asked me at 14 whether I masturbated or had ever, masturbated I would have said no just because I, I didn't recognize that as self-pleasure as something that you know is actually healthy that I should be doing so so yeah more education to my younger self would have been great um, but in the end my journey turned out fine I'm happy where am I now and maybe if I hadn't had those experiences uh, I wouldn't be where I am today. Right, exactly if I'd had this perfect like sexual kind of yeah awakening um, and yeah, you wouldn't have the rage in your belly, would you? And the yeah. passion to change and correct things. So, um, um, awesome. Do you know what? That was great. So, thank you. Very interesting. Um, and thank you very much for Thanks chatting for to us. Hopefully, we won't get blocked on social media for this one, but who knows? We've Hopefully. streamed it across three platforms. So, you know, as long as one of them keeps it, <laughs> then we're all right. Um, so, thank you. Thank you, Emma. It was great. Uh -huh.